What's up, folks? It's laundry day, so I'm wearing my wrestling training shirts from back in the day, which reminded me of a story related to what I've been working on. So I used to train over the summers with an ex-Olympic wrestler named Ricky, and at the time, I didn't know what I was doing in my life, right? I was a high school kid, didn't know what I was going to major in, didn't know what path I was going to be on, indie game world didn't exist, etc. And Ricky made this point that because I knew how to do things other people would either want done or know how to do, I was going to be fine. And sure enough, that's how I've made my living most of the past two decades, not actually in a traditional job, but by doing things that people either want to know how to do or needed done. And when the job market is not looking good, as is unfortunately the case in the main industries I've been involved in, then it's a reminder that if you have skills other people want done or want to know how to do, there may be a way you can carve out another way to keep yourself afloat. Now, obviously, still, by all means, if you can find the stability, take it. If you can be applying to stuff, do that. That's usually plan A. I'm talking about when plan B, because you're shipwrecked, what else are you going to do to stay afloat? Occasionally, there are other ways to make this work. You may have seen this making the rounds lately. It's a tweet from Miss Mayan or Allie. Uh, and you don't even read it all to you, but the gist, right, being that people are being charged exorbitant amounts for services. People actually delivering those services who have the expertise, nursing home aides, educators, everything, they're underpaid, right? The workers are underpaid, the, the services overcharge us, and all that money disappears in the middle. But to recognize that is that there's opportunity there. Meaning, if, if and where you're in some sort of structure where it's appropriate that you can actually do business directly to people who need work done, to realize how much waste there is in the middle, going to people who don't know how to do the work and aren't doing the work. But if what your skills are in that you can do or help people learn how to do are in a space where you can just directly find people who need that done and do it for them, it means you may actually be able to charge them less, but be making more when it's not all getting sponged and absorbed into 400 other people in the process who are contributing next to nothing, don't know how the work is done. All they were doing was slapping a brand on it. If you're in a really low paying job, that can be obviously a source of frustration and grief. It also means that that's that much smaller of a fence keeping you in. Think of it this way. There's people I've trained who had a really hard time making a pivot into doing independent stuff because their day job paid them so well. Sounds like a good problem to have, right? But the reality is they're never going to get anywhere near the earnings they were from Google, from Amazon, from Facebook, whatever. And so they just felt stuck. If you are feeling like you're underpaid or you're having a tenuous situation, again, it means that the barrier, can you earn more than that? Maybe. So that's where I started, right? When I was a graduate student trying to figure out, can I make my living as an online independent educator? My baseline was the very little Georgia Tech was paying me to teach all of the programming for multiple classes for multiple semesters for all the required graduate students to go through the pipeline. That was me teaching that programming, barely making ends meet, even in a really cheap apartment full of cockroaches. So my point there is that I had a smaller gap to jump than when I was doing AAA game development and the bar to beat was tougher. But part of the challenge here is it's got to be shaped very differently to have any chance of working. It can't just be replicating what you used to do at the big company, but totally independently, right? If nothing wrong with any of these jobs or roles, but if you were formerly working at a big retail environment, selling some sort of thing, and you try to sell independently at that same price, it's never going to work. You do not have that kind of volume. If you used to make blended drinks and smoothies for a corporation that gave you the formula for Orange Julius or something, you go try to sell smoothies independently, it's going to be really hard to make those numbers work. Because once again, you do not have that volume, you don't have that brand recognition. And if you've been following my material for years, like when I did this sort of thing, you might be thinking, oh, Chris is going to say that you should sell games and making games to sell is the way to do it. I am definitely not saying that. That is one of the hardest things to be doing to just create an independent art project and sell it and hope that that makes numbers work. That is a super rare case that that happens. I'm going to be talking about instead other directions, other vectors, other ways to shape what you're doing around what your priorities, what your goals, what your interests are, what your situation, opportunities, and positions are. But it is usually, that is not usually the best answer. If you have the skills to do that, we might be looking at how to part those skills out into other ways you can continue to do your work independently, perhaps even to support those kind of projects. But that is usually not the primary plan. Instead, you've often got to work backwards from what is it you can do that's high enough value and more unique to a narrower niche that will never make sense for the larger agencies or institutions to be able to target because you can do things that are better adapted to your strengths and weaknesses. But this is also wildly different than just doing whatever you want, whatever seems fun, whatever interests you. That is a hobby and that is valid, that is fine, that is not a business. Part of the work is also in figuring out how to think about these so in your Venn diagram of what you can do and what you can reach people who will pay for where is that intersection is a non-trivial amount of work and a different shape of thinking than we typically come into it from. So I'm building lots of material around this. Go to feelbetterselling.com for more information about that as it becomes available. I'm really wanting to help other people do this sort of thing. And I say this sort of thing, not exactly what I'm doing, right? I'm not trying to make you like me. I don't expect your results or outcomes to be looking the same shape as what I've done. 
But can you build on the things I have figured out over the years between myself, between talking to other peers, between helping to support other people through, trying to take their first steps in this direction? Can we get you into a situation where you feel confident promoting your work independently, where you feel capable of putting a price on it? In fact, a real sustainable price where you've worked out the numbers to realistically have any sort of shot, if not even on the first release, on the second, on the third, are you building sort of longer arc? It's the kind of things we'll be talking about in feelbetterselling.com. If it interests you, I want to help you build those foundations. And again, obviously, it is a th- sort of thing where if you still have some sort of opportunity that is more stable, by all means, I'm so glad. Take advantage of that. Continue to use that. But do not count on that forever, right? Things beyond our control happen. And sometimes it's not anybody's fault. No one did anything wrong. Industry shift, shapes, change, opportunities shift around us. How can you be building a better foundation so that if and when that Titanic scrapes the iceberg, you find yourself with a head start on your life raft? That's it for now. Feelbetterselling.com. Enter your email address there. We'll be in touch soon with more information.